This is your sometimes weekly Game of Thrones news update where I take what I consider to be the most important Game of Thrones news from the past seven or so days and I share it with you. Warning, there are spoilers for season seven of Game of Thrones and there is a giveaway at the end of this video as well. I'll announce the winner from last news video's giveaway at the end. <sighs> Euron's actor talked about his role in season 7. When asked just how much shit Euron was going to start this season, he replied, Enough to get satisfied. Good satisfied. He also said he may be going back to do some more Game of Thrones, but continuing that maybe he won't, and that he'll take a break. Which to me says he doesn't make it through season 7, but he could also be trying not to lie and keep people guessing. He said in the past that he really, really hates people that spoil things and that he never wants to be one of those people. I really don't want to see Euron die this season, but I don't know, we've seen more <sighs> frivolous deaths than that. Don't, don't, don't bring it up. Just move on. Don't bring it up. Ed Sheeran revealed that he doesn't die in season 7, which I guess thanks for letting me know in advance so I'm not anticipating you being brutally stabbed to death. Not that I was anticipating that. He's only in the show for 5 minutes and since he's likely in a scene with Arya, he's at Winterfell just chilling. Maybe he's a singer in the background at Winterfell while Jon is getting eye raped by Daenerys on Dragonstone. Also because he asked for a sexy role, and musicians can be sexy, he also said that he wants to come back for season 8 and have a cameo again, so that kind of indicates he doesn't die. Maybe he's a traveling singer and he went to the north this season, though who the hell would travel to the north when winter is coming, but who knows. In the HBO promo, we got a glimpse of Jaime, Daenerys, Tormund, Sansa, Bran, and Jon. They all look nice and bundled up for winter or colder weather. And kind of cool to see Sansa still has her Sith necklace on. Daenerys' outfit is just as sexy as from the promo, probably because it's the same outfit. A new promo further showed Tyrion. His outfit looks so, so good. I just love the costume designers on this show. We also got the Hound, Brienne, and then Masande wearing a Three Heads of the Dragon brooch. It is confirmed our favorite Iron Banker will be back for Season 7. Likely he will try to collect the Crown's debt from Cersei, and Cersei will absolutely refuse. And then the Iron Bank will back Daenerys for the throne. Things are just not gonna go your way this season, Cersei. In George R. R. Martin news, George is now trying to appeal to the younger crowd. Then his minions that control his Twitter account made a hilarious tweet. I wonder what my fans will be talking about in the comments today. Oh, right. The same ultra motivational speeches I get every day. Yay. I'm sure both George and his Twitter handlers get sick of the constant questioning. He also admitted to a fan that he has to go back and heavily rewrite chapters all the time because of plot holes. Lastly, he said that you can get fired from the Night's Watch. Just ask Slint. Ian Glenn, Jorah's actor, talked a little bit about his character, and I feel like he discussed something we've all been thinking about for many seasons. How many miles is he going to get out of his costume? So on Jorah's costume, he said, They found it for me, a costume that just felt right. I don't know. It just felt like it belonged and belonged to him. I think Jorah just needs to land in a safer place and then he'll have time to change his clothing. Get cleaned up a little. I'm gonna be super upset if he changes his shirt in season 7. Jorah, you need to rock that shirt. That's like your lucky shirt. Do you know how many people die in this story and you're still alive? It's that fucking shirt, man. Keep it on. Also, I think he confirmed that he makes it through season 7 because he told Stuff, I've always enjoyed playing Jorah. It's been a role that's been good to me so far. There's quite a high death count in Game of Thrones and they don't blanch at removing favorite characters. They just get rid of them in a brutal way. My end may well be close, but so far I'm doing okay. So far I'm doing okay really makes it sound like he makes it through season 7 of Game of Thrones as he's finished filming season 7, so I'm certain he knows whether he dies or not, and he hasn't seen season 8 script, so, you know, he doesn't know if he does die in the final season. But on the other hand, Game of Thrones actors have been known to troll us and throw us off the scent, so the so far he's doing well could be, you know, as far as we've seen on screen, and 
season seven he's going to die brutally. Though I hope not, I really want to see him sacrifice himself for Danny in season eight. He also admitted that he doesn't match the physical description of Jorah as seen in the books. I don't think I bear any physical resemblance whatsoever to the character that George R. R. Martin described in the books on which the series is based. I think he was very dark-haired, wiry man with an ugly face. I'm not saying I don't have an ugly face and I think quite short and stocky. But they probably thought it would be good if you could see why Jorah and Daenerys might get it together. If you had an ugly stump of a man who had no chance whatsoever and was fairly repellent, then it would be harder for them to tell that story. I think most of us have known since season one that he didn't match book Jorah's looks, but I think he really pointed out a problem, maybe not a problem, but something they do with casting actors. They usually try to make them a little more attractive so fans react a bit more positive to them. I mean, look at the CW. That is just gorgeous people everywhere. And I I'm not complaining. I, I like to look at gorgeous people and so do a lot of other people. But he also talked about fans trying to get Danny and Jorah to get it on. Yeah, it's sweet, the fan reactions. I think that they wish Jorah well. I think they wish he would that he deserves physical love in return or something. I don't know. I mean, the male fans react a little differently, but there is a certain female fan where maybe they see themselves in the story, and as long as you're failing as Jorah, you're maybe still more available for them in a funny way. Jorah ponders it too much, I think. Not that Jorah's ever going to get it. Well, he might. Who knows? I'm curious if there's actually a lot of people that think Daenerys and Jorah will actually get together. I actually want to Google that now. Don't. Don't Google that. Winner from last news video's giveaway where I asked you to caption this photo was 1023E Stewart who wrote, I knew I should have put child locks on the windows. Dark. Message me for your gift card. New giveaway for your chance to win a $15 gift card to Amazon. Just like this video and then in the comment section below because the Jura Danny thing gave me an idea, write which characters getting together romantically would make you just vomit everywhere. So write your answer in the comment section below and I will pick the winner and I will announce it next news videos giveaway. So thank you so much for watching. Please like the video, subscribe, and remember the person you just met is your soulmate. <clears throat> Sir Waymore Royce was conflicted. The cunt of the other was the tightest, wettest, and strangely hottest of any he had sampled before, whores and highborn alike. Despite his weakening protests as the creature began to bounce on top of him, an unwilling moan escaped his lips. <laughs> Sir Waymore Royce's scream bore deep into Will's soul. His arms were entirely frozen into blue, unresponsive ice, and deathly blue color was spreading over the entirety of his body. The knight could feel his warmth being sucked from his entire body through his cock into the cunt of the other, who wore an expression of pure bliss and victory. Will rose. Sir Waymore Royce was already standing over him. His cock was rock hard, an icy dagger sticking straight from his lap. An, an icy dagger sticking straight from his lap. His eyes were open, an unnatural blue staring outward. The sword fell from Will suddenly, useless from his fingers, and he turned to run before a strong hand grabbed his shoulders stumbling as he is forced to bend over a nearby rock. You know, if I'm going to be honest with you, Will paired with another isn't 
the nastiest pairing I could see. It actually might be kind of romantic, so. I'm gonna go drink some more.